Hello viewers, I am Dr. Mala Das Sharma and you are watching my channel Kim Philik. Let's start the 14th episode of Teaching Chemistry Through Riddles. We will start this episode with riddle number 14. My request to you is that please watch the video till the end to enjoy the riddle completely. Let's start riddle number 14. A is a process related to absorption followed by slow emission of light. A time gap persists between absorption and emission. Based on electronic transition, the process can be classified into two types. Type 1 can be considered as modified version of another process. Type 2 refers to the actual process A. So, this is the riddle. Now, the primary question is, what is referred by A? Guess the answer. The answer is phosphorescence. Other questions are, number 2, why Time gap exists between the absorption and emission of light during the process. Number 3. Name the two types of the process A. Number 4. What are the transitions involved in two different types of the process A? Now let's discuss this phosphorescence in details to get the answers of all the questions. Phosphorescence and types of phosphorescence. Phosphorescence is of two types. Number one, alpha phosphorescence or delayed fluorescence. Number two, beta phosphorescence. In my previous video, I have explain in details about this radiative and non-radiative transition using Jablonski diagram. Now, actually, the excited electronic states are singlet state and triplet state. Ground state is always singlet state. Now, after absorbing the radiation, the molecule gets activated and this electron pair gets unpaired and one of these electron from this ground singlet state is promoted to the higher energy electronic state or higher energy singlet state. From this higher energy singlet state, it can come to the higher energy triplet state by an uh, by a non-radiative process known as the intersystem crossing. When the electron is in the higher energy singlet state, then during this promotion, there is no change in the spin. So, therefore, total spin of this electron pair is 0 and the spin multiplicity twice is plus 1. S is the total spin. Twice is plus 1 is equal to 1. But when the electron is in the higher energy triplet state, then there is a change in the electron spin. In that case, the total spin of this paired electron is S is equal to 1. And then the spin multiplicity is twice is plus 1 is equal to 3. That is the triplet state. Now just suppose from A0, that is the 0 vibrational level of A0, the electron or the unpaired electron which gets unpaired by activation, unpaired electron goes to the higher vibrational level of S1. From this higher vibrational level, it can come to the zero vibrational level of S1 through vibrational relaxation and then immediately it can come from S1 to S0 by a radiative transition that is fluorescence. But it may go to the higher vibrational level of T1, first triplet excited state. 
by another non-radiative transition known as intact system crossing. And from there, from this higher vibrational level of T1, it can come to the zero vibrational level of T1 through vibrational relaxation. And the, from zero vibrational level of T1, when it comes back to the ground state, then the energy is released in the form of radiation and that is the phosphorescence. And when the electrons are in, electron is in the triplet excited state and the transition occurs from triplet state to singlet state during phosphorescence. That means phosphorescence transition is the transition between the two electronic state of different spin multiplicity. In that case, this transition involves in the change in the electron spin or inversion of electron spin. Now, see this diagram. From S0, the electron may go to S1 if we consider. Then from S1, immediately if it comes to ground state S0, that is fluorescence or prompt fluorescence and this is first process. Otherwise, it may go to this T1 state by intersystem crossing and then come back to a zero singlet ground state by emitting the radiation, emitting the energy in the form of radiation which is your phosphorescence or beta phosphorescence. What may also happen from this triplet excited state the electron may return back to S1, first singlet excited state, by acquiring energy from the environment. And the, this process is known as reversed intersystem crossing. So, after coming to S1, then it can come back to S0. That means from S1 to S0 transition, which is like fluorescence. So, this process is known as the alpha phosphorescence or delayed fluorescence where the transition is from T1 to S1, then S1 to S0. And this delayed fluorescence depends on the energy difference between this S1 and T1 state. Now, phosphorescence occurs when the electrons from the excited triplet state return to the singlet ground state. So, this process is the electronic transition from the two states of different spin multiplicity. So, during phosphorescence, the spin of the electron changes. That is the inversion of electron spin. Transitions in phosphorescence, already we have seen phosphorescence two types. For alpha phosphorescence, the transition is first triplet excited state to first singlet excited state and from this S1 directly transition is to S0 that means singlet ground state. For beta phosphorescence the transition is directly from T1 first triplet excited state to singlet ground state. Now once the electron in a different spin state it cannot relax into the ground state quickly because the re-emission involves quantum mechanically forbidden energy state transitions. That means when the electron is in the triplet state, immediately it cannot come to the singlet ground state because this is the these two states are different states of electronic states of different spin multiplicity and this transition is not allowed quantum mechanically or quantum mechanically forbidden energy states transition. So, phosphorescence is a slow process. Lifetime is 10 to the power minus 3 second. As this is a slow process, as the electrons immediately cannot come to the ground state because it has to change the spin. So, there is a time gap and during this time sometimes photochemical reactions occur. So, photochemical reaction takes place when the electron is in the triplet excited state. 
since the phosphorescent transition occurs very slowly in certain materials, absorbed radiation may be re-emitted at lower intensity for up to several hours after the original excitation. Once the molecule is getting excited by absorbing the radiation and immediately it is not coming back <coughs> through the radiation, so it may continue, the phosphorescence uh, transition or phosphorescence light may continue for a long time, up to several hours after the original excitation. And that is the phosphorescence continues for some time after the light source is cut off. You cut off the light source, still the phosphorescence light will be emitted. In phosphorescence, we have seen absorption and subsequent emission of radiation is bridged by a time gap. And here you have seen that already this diagram that is after absorption of radiation, it, if it goes to the singlet state and from singlet state, first singlet state, if it comes immediately to S0 that is fluorescence, but phosphorescence it will come to T1, first triplet excited state and then come to this ground state. And this transition that is T1 to S0, transition between the states of different spin multiplicity which is not spectroscopically allowed transition or quantum mechanically forbidden transition. So, phosphorescence gives the weak spectra. This blue line indicates the absorption spectra. This line indicates this uh, uh, fluorescence spectra for fluorescence and this uh, line, that is maroon line, indicates the uh, spectra for phosphorescence. Blue line, the spectra for absorption. So, phosphorescence process gives weak spectra. Now, fluorescence versus phosphorescence. Transition for fluorescence is S1 to S0. During this transition, energy is released in the form of fluorescence light. Transition for phosphorescence, for alpha phosphorescence or delayed fluorescence, it is from T1 to S1 and immediately from S1 to S0. And for beta phosphorescence, transition is directly from T1 to S0. First triplet excited state to singlet ground state. Fluorescence light stops as soon as the light source is cut off. But phosphorescence continues for some time after the light source is cut off. Because it needs some time to come back to this ground state as this process involves the inversion of spin. It is a fast process, for, that is fluorescence is a fast process, lifetime is 10 to the power minus 8 seconds. Phosphorescence slow process, lifetime 10 to the power minus 3 seconds. Fluorescence transition is spectroscopically allowed transition, therefore fluorescence gives intense spectra. But phosphorescence transition is spectroscopically forbidden transition because it is a transition between the two states of different spin multiplicity. So, phosphorescence gives weak spectra. This is the, some examples of phosphorescence phenomena in our daily life. These articles are coated with phosphorescent material and this material absorbs light. After that, after some time, it can continuously emit light for long time. So, it gives the glow from this uh, article cell, clock dials, stickers and these toys. It will glow in the dark due to emission of light through phosphorescence process. Now, coming to the answers of the remaining question. Question number 2 was, why a time gap exists between the absorption and emission of light during the process? Only do you know the answer? Because phosphorescence occurs with the inversion of electron spin and this emission involves quantum mechanically forbidden energy state transition. It is not allowed transition and accompanied by inversion of spin. That's why it is taking some time. There is a time gap between absorption and emission. Number 3. Name the two types of the process A. Already you know alpha phosphorescence or delayed fluorescence. Number 2. Beta phosphorescence. Number 4. What are the transitions involved in two different types of the process A? 
we know that for alpha phosphorescence the transition is from t1 to s1 and immediately from s1 to s0 and for beta phosphorescence it is directly from t1 to s0 so this is our riddle number 14 please send your comment and suggestion in the comment box uh, you can watch my earlier videos uh, from the playlist. Uh, the link is given in the description box.